Hey folks, welcome to Jewish Asian and Island Pacific Wrestlers You Should Know. It's sponsored by Premier Pro Wrestling and I'm Randy Ritchie and today we are going to pay homage to Umaga and did you guys even know of Dean Malenko's brother Joe? Hmm? As we all know, Umaga was a member of the Anoa family, Rizan Simone wrestling family. During his first stint with WWE, billed as Jamal, he was part of a tag team, Three Minute Warning, with his cousin Matt. He was billed as Rosie. He was released from the company in June 2003, later going to All Japan Pro Wrestling and becoming a mainstay for the company from late 2003 to 2005. In April 06, he returned to WWE under the ring name Umaga. Now, that right there is something that everybody should take a lesson from in pro wrestling or aspiring pro wrestling. Or if you're a fan who claims to love pro wrestling, this is the activity knowledge. Go back there and check social media if Umaga even had social media, okay? They got a great look at him at WWE. He made some money at WWE. He went away, kept his mouth shut, and he went to Japan, and he learned a shitload while he was wrestling in Japan. And when he came back to WWE, he was believability personified. Look at the push that Umaga got because he mastered the politics of this industry. Do you understand? Now, I'm going to start this by saying I really fucking hate this current internet wrestling community crap, okay? I'm going to pick it up later. Don't, Don't you even worry about it. And I really, I really hope that some of these people with the biggest mouths and these scoopers fucking end up going face to face and meeting up with any of Fatou's brothers or uh, even his sons. He was found by his wife on the couch in their Houston, Texas home, unresponsive, with blood coming out of his nose, and that was December 4, 2009. A 911 call was made. He was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Paramedics determined that that Fatou. Umaga uh, was suffering a heart attack and they were able to restart his heart, although he showed no signs of brain activity. He was kept on life support for much of the Friday and later suffered a second heart attack. He was ultimately pronounced dead around 5 p.m. The man was only 36 years old in the prime of his life and the prime of his money-making years. And you know what? I'm not even going to go into this bullshit about the toxicology reports. I'm not even going to do that because you guys have no idea. He had four children. He was a family man, and he was trying his best with the years that he had to make as much as he could so the family didn't have to worry. He sacrificed his body in the ring, and at the end of the day, all the Internet fans who love to go through the toxicology report and this and that and the other thing and reasons why he is released. Forget about how into that mother effer they were at his peak for World Wrestling Entertainment. And let's face it, over the last 20 years, he had one of the most memorable, most successful runs with the company. And did you know, and this comes with being Island Pacific, specifically Samoan, they are prone to it, Fatu had both heart and liver disease, okay? And at the end of the day, what ends up on the death certificate for Umaga was a heart attack, and that was the cause of death. The rest of the drama, you can just kiss my ass. I don't even want to know somebody that can't remember all the good that this guy brought rather than try to bury him behind a smelly keyboard after the man passed. At the end of the day, 
that was one of the most believable, believable wrestlers. I'm going to go ahead and say in the history of pro wrestling. Just go back and watch some of those matches, man, and you check the crowd reactions. Now, on a happier note, Joe Malenko, who is Jewish, he's the brother of Dean, real name, Jody Simon. He was born in 56. I had no idea. This man was nine years older than me, or is nine years older than me. This I like. Is an, is an American former professional wrestler known under the ring named Joe Malenko. Malenko was born into a wrestling family, and his father Boris was a prominent wrestling figure in his own right. Dean Malenko is his younger brother. He trained under Carl Gotch for seven years. So you Indians that can't wrap your brains around the fact that Triple H comes out and says that he doesn't get any bad habits with collegiate athletes and all the indie guys have way too many bad habits, okay? This is Joe Malenko. He trained under Carl Gotch for seven years and is known by many along with, uh, I'm sorry, Fujiwara. And he basically called... He basically ended up calling, and we're talking about Carl Gotch, Joe, his best student. Now, the thing that impressed me the most is I was always aware when I was breaking into the industry of both Joe and Dean, because I was lucky enough to get tapes sent to me from Japan, you know, and I saw amazing stuff, and I am almost positive I couldn't tell you exactly what moves that I have stolen from Joe Malenko when I broke in and the people in the United States, especially where I cut my teeth in the Mid-South, even in the locker room, hadn't seen that stuff before and he made me look like a genius. The most impressive thing to me was to see Joe Malenko, who has got all that amazing, hard-hitting Japanese training, okay, and Carl Gotch training, have amazing matches with the young bloods. Amazing, entertaining matches that adapted to the style of wrestling in Puerto Rico. Now just listen to this for a minute, and this is after that hard training. Malenko is most known for his stints in Japan. Malenko began in the Universal Wrestling Federation in Japan 1985. One of his most well-known matches in the UWF was his tag match with Super Tiger where they faced down Fujiwara and Osamu Kido. Malenko would then team up with his brother Dean in All Japan Pro Wrestling to form the Malenko Brothers. Malenko would tour regularly with All Japan from February 88 until May of 92. Malenko had two reigns as, ju as World Junior Heavyweight Champion from late 89 to early 90. He teamed with Kenta Kobashi against the Can-Am Express, which was then Dan Crawford and Doug Furness for the All-Asia Tag Team Championships. Joe's most memorable matches came versus his brother Dean, and I've got to find those now that I know they exist. Hopefully I can find them. And when they, the Malenko brothers, faced the British Bruisers, Johnny Smith. Hey, we're cousins. Uh, I, you know, I love Johnny Smith. I actually work with Johnny Smith uh, for his tryout for World Wrestling Entertainment. Johnny Smith and Dynamite Kid during Giant Baba's 30th wrestling anniversary on uh, September 30th, 1990. Joe and Dean's only chance for the All-Asia Tag Championship was against the Can-Am Express in 92. Now, all this being said, guys... Joel landed on his feet and he elected to go another way. And today he is a successful pharmacist and from all reports I hear, a happy guy. I wonder myself how tight him and Dean are, especially since Dean is suffering from that Parkinson's, but I would imagine they're close. You know, so once again, I hope you guys are enjoying these, uh, you know, being brought to you by Premier Pro Wrestling. So there's no YouTube commercials on there. We ask that you like and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. And if you happen upon this on Rumble, please follow us on Rumble.